afternoon everyone. <clears throat> in these short videos, I'm going to be introducing you to some of the techniques in my watercolor book that um, you may not be aware of or that were written down, but much, much more easy to understand if you can actually see what's happening. So we're going to start in the book and I'll just move over to the table so you can see where we're coming from. Okay, so this is my watercolor book from wet to dry and everything in between. Now, in the first part of the book, it tells you a little bit about the materials, the supplies, how to play with watercolor a small amount, how to get used to your pens and brushes and all of the materials. Getting to know the colors is making a color wheel. And there's a video, a separate video on my site on how to make the color wheel. So we'll move along just a little bit further than that to the section about painting with watercolor on page 11. And painting with watercolor involves various applications of watercolor. And the applications are usually called washes. And so today I'm going to just show you how to do some of these washes. And there's a little section here from my journal, but I'll show you a slightly larger one from another journal here. And the washes can be either flat or graded. This is a flat wash here. This is a graded wash from dark to light or wet in wet on dry paper or wet in wet on wet paper. So you have choice of how you put the paint on the paper. Depending upon the subject, you're going to want to choose some of these. And the way that watercolor is built up is by laying washes one on top of the other, usually, leaving some of the original wash showing. And you can see that quite clearly in this little example here and the explanation below it. Below it. So I'm going to move over to page 12, where it tells you how to make a flat wash. And this is what a flat wash looks like. It's completely flat all the way through. No variation or very little variation from one end to another. The other type of wash is a graded wash, where it goes from dark to light. And I'll show you that one too. And then you have some opportunities to work wet in wet. And the wet in wet is either on wet paper or on dry paper. The difference being that on wet paper, if you wet the paper first, the colors, the same colors, will appear to be lighter. Okay, so if you want a light wash with soft edges, you're going to be putting wet on wet paper. And if not, you're going to be starting with dry paper and letting the colors mix together on the paper. So I'm going to show you that, but I'm also going to show you um, how to mix colors in with these washes as you go. So this little demo will be a flat wash, a graded wash, and a wash where you can add in a variety of colors. So looking back at the book here, something along the lines of this, where you've got multiple colors going in in the first wash. OK, it's another one of those on um, the next page also. But So we're looking here at page 12 and looking at the instructions for how to paint a flat wash. So I start off with the idea that I'm going to raise up the paper a little bit. So I have a plexiglass board here. Let's just focus that in a bit so you can see. And something that supports it, it could be um, a tape roll or it could be, I just happen to have this little block that I use in the studio to raise up the top side of the paper because we need gravity to help us with this wash. And then we're going to put the paper on here. This is a 140 pound cold press paper. And that's the paper that I use most of the time. I'm going to tape it down or just make sure connect it so it doesn't um, move too much while we're working. Down just a little bit so you can see. OK, so we have a few rectangles marked out here for the washes. Using a round brush, you're going to want to use a round brush that's a fairly good size that holds quite a lot of water. And so I'm using a number 10 brush for these small areas. If I were making this on a, a larger piece of paper, I'd use a much bigger brush. And I'm a little croaky today because of allergies. I apologize for that. OK, so going over to the palette, I'm going to mix up some colors. Now, one of the deals with these washes, if you want them to be completely flat, is that the colors cannot be too thick and sticky and dry. There has to be plenty of water in the mix. 
So it doesn't really matter which color we use. We can choose something like a, a blue, for example, or maybe a pink. Let's choose a permanent rose. It's a nice pink color to start with. Okay, so we put plenty of paint on the paper, on the uh, palette. And then you could just test, <coughs> excuse me, you can just test to see how light or how dark this paint is going to be. And you need enough paint to be able to cover, you need it to flow just a little more than that. There we go, just a little more. So it's probably about a light middle tone. And make sure you have enough paint to cover this whole area because uh, you can't stop in the middle and mix up more paint. So it's always a good idea to mix more than you think you will need for that reason. You just can't come back and and fix it. Okay. All right. So just a touch more color in that should do it. Just a little tiny touch more water. Now we have a nice big puddle of paint to use. We're still working on the same tone. So we're pretty close. So that's good. All right. So this particular flat wash relies on the fact that you're going to put a bead of water along the strip that you're going to paint on the top of this piece of paper. And the bead of water is the clue and the, the way to make a flat wash. You can make a flat wash with a flat brush or you can make it with a round brush. With a round brush, you need to use this idea of the bead. And the bead is this area of wet that I'm applying right now. This is what we call a bead of water. Okay, And that bead, as you come down the paper, is going to be a little thicker at the bottom than it is at the top. And each time you add more paint, that bead will continue to be, because of the gravity, at the bottom of the area that you're painting. Can you see that bead? See the thickness of the paint here? Now, all the while you have that bead, you're going to get a flat wash. If that bead dries, you will get stripes in your wash. Okay, you can guarantee a flat wash if you just keep connecting your brush into the bead each time. Now, I'm hardly touching the paper here. I'm not pushing on my brush at all. I'm not trying to paint. I'm just trying to pull that water across from one side to the other. And it's a very, very light process. If you're scraping the paper, you're going to get stripes in your wash. Okay, and... As soon as the bead begins to get just a little bit thinner, then you put more paint on and you can pull this paint down and you can get something that is completely flat. Now you might want to wash like this in a sky, for example, a nice blue sky. <clears throat> so that's one possibility for this type of wash. Or you might want it in a smaller area in um, another painting on the side of a building, perhaps. Generally, in watercolor, we need more than just a flat wash, but it's a really good idea to have this skill under your belt and to know how to do it. And practicing with this means that you could then put another wash over the top and add in a few more possibilities. Now, what happens when we get to the bottom here? Well, the bead is going to continue all the way to the bottom. And then we're going to use our brush to pick up that extra paint. We can go all the way down to the bottom here. Okay, now I'm going to just rinse my brush, put it on the sponge, and lift up that extra paint at the bottom. I might have to do that more than once. Make sure you put your brush on the sponge because if you don't, you're introducing more water into this area. Okay, now it doesn't matter where you stop there. And at any time with this flat wash, you could paint around a subject that you have drawn in ahead of time. But it's a really good skill to know how to make a flat wash like that. Now, because gravity is involved, we can't lay it flat. We must keep it angled like this until it dries completely. The top part of the wash is drying already, 
the bottom part of the wash is still wet. So if we lay the board flat, this wet area is going to bleed up into the dry area and form blooms in there. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to touch it once it's, once it's down like this. We want to leave it just as it is and let it dry. So that's how you make a flat wash. And the deal with the flat wash is the bead is the key to making it flat. So you have to keep it wet along the edge of the brush. Okay. Now, if we wanted to make a graded wash, let's use the same color just because it's there. It doesn't make any difference which color we use, but this is a good one because it's fairly transparent. Okay, if you want to make a graded wash, you can either go from dark to light or light to dark. It's a little easier to go from dark to light. And so I'm going to start with the idea of dark to light. And so what I'm going to do is do exactly the same thing as I started with the other wash. But as I go on, as I move forward, I'm going to be adding water to the paint. So we'll do just a couple of rows, get the bead going. And we'll do just a couple of rows here. Make sure that bead is there and make sure it's nice and thick at the bottom of the row that you're painting. Pull it down just a little bit. Okay, and you can see the bead. You can see when I turn it, right, that bead goes across the paper and it's sitting there. It's a nice wet area all the way across here, a wet line. And that's what we call the bead. Now I'm going to add water into the paint and pull that bead down just a little more maybe two or three brush folds. And again, I'm hardly touching the paper. Now add more water to the paint and pull that down just a little further. Now add more water to the paint and pull that down just a little further. And a little more. So gradually we're diluting this paint. Gradually this color is getting lighter. It would help if uh, my table was absolutely level too. Okay, a little more water still. Keep that bead going. Once the bead starts disappearing, you're going to end up with lines in your wash. You don't want that. Okay, even more water. We'll get it lighter and lighter. So I moved a little lighter there. And you can continue until you get lighter and lighter. Or you could even move to clear water at this point to keep that bead going. I'm having to tip my um, surface here because my table isn't completely flat. This is just pure water now. just to finish that off. So now we have a graded wash. Okay, and a graded wash can be completely flat or um, this one has a little variation. A little variation in the tones. And one of the nice things about a graded wash is you can use it underneath other areas. Okay. So you might get a little variation, particularly if, as I was saying, my, my um, surface here is not completely level. So if you're going to get a little bit of that where your bead is on one side more than the other, you might get just a little more variation. And then the third one that I'm going to do here is a color change. So I'm going to take another color here. Um, I'll take uh, cobalt blue or ultramarine blue, maybe. And we'll make a second puddle. And we'll go back to our pink here and make them about the same consistency, about the same amount of water in each one. Just a little bit more in that one. Okay. And now the graded wash, or the colored wash, if you like, can be started with either of these colors. And let's start with the blue up here. Again, we'll make sure that we have the bead. Okay, so practicing this, these beaded washes are really, it's really helpful to 
understand how water works, watercolour works on the paper, and make it interesting too. There we go. Okay, nice speed. Now, when we want to change colour, we don't have to do anything except add the next colour in. Okay, and the next colour is going to mix in with that colour. And as we go further down, the more of the pink that we put in, the more of the pink that will show on the paper. So we can change the colour to purple, and eventually we can change it to pink just by moving over to more of the pink. Or we could take it back to the purple by adding in more of the blue. So what you're doing is you're adding the colour into the bead, okay, the new colour. Each time you're going to put that into the bead and so that you get that variation of colour. And the faster you go, right, the more variation you'll get, the more changes you'll get in your painting. So we can go back and forth with these colours, move it from one to the other, and you can use any colour to do this. It doesn't really matter which one you decide to use. So if you look at the uh, page in the book and you'll see what's in my journal, you'll see there are a lot of little samples there of subjects that were made by putting these washes on the paper first and then painting on top of them, adding subjects on top of them. So you can vary the washes. So this is the way of doing a flat wash, a graded wash and a coloured wash. And you'll get variations and the colour wash will give you more variations and a few more stripes depending on how quickly you move from one colour to another. If you move slowly, you'll get less of a stripe. If you move more quickly, you'll get more of a stripe. So depending on what you want to see or how that works, and it'd be a good idea for you to practice these. It's really, really helpful to be able to know how to do this. Okay, so we're going to move on. This is number number five on the page again. Now this is page 14. We're going to move over to page 14 and we're going to do just a little bit of wet in wet. And this is just dry enough now so that I can put this to one side and make it flat without it changing too much. I'm going to take another piece of paper here and we're going to do a wet in wet. And wet and wet means that you need to understand how to control your paper and your paint and how it works when it goes on the paper. And so wet and wet is uh, a way to understand how paint goes onto the paper. So wherever you put water on your paper, what's going to happen is you're going to be able to see that the paint will bleed. Wherever the paper is dry, the paint will have a hard edge and it won't bleed. So this is wet in wet we're doing now. Wet in wet has a lot of applications also in watercolour and you can use many different possibilities of this. The one that we understand to be true wet in wet is when we wet the paper first and you can see a slight amount of pink on my brush here as I'm doing this. We wet the paper first so the paper starts out as wet. Now anytime you want a background or an area with a soft edges, this is the method you're going to use. If you want a background and an area with more texture, then you can use the next process that I'm going to show you. Okay, so this is wet in wet on wet paper. And when you put paint on top of that, particularly when the paint is really uh, wet, it's going to bleed. As you put it on, it will bleed and then it will continue to bleed. You see how that's continuing to, to 
move and when you add this paint to the paper and you mix it up a little bit you'll see that the areas of paint will connect and bleed together with soft edges. So it's kind of fun. But one of the problems with wet and wet is that you don't have a lot of control over where the paint goes. And so it tends to do its own thing, which is okay if that's what you're looking for. But sometimes we don't want it to be quite a soft edge or sometimes we don't want it to flow quite as much. One way to stop it flowing quite as much is to make one of the paints, the paint that you're adding on to the top, just a little drier. When you put that on and it's just a little drier than the first area, it won't tend to bleed quite as much. Okay, so that's one possibility. But wet and wet usually relies on soft edges and it relies on the paint continuing to move even after you've put it on. Now it is possible to paint all of your paintings by wetting the paper first, starting out with the lighter colors and just keep on working, keeping on working while it's still wet. Okay, I'm just going to add in a few more little colors here. So you can see you can play with it while it's wet. As soon as it begins to dry, you need to stop. And what you'll find generally with a wet in wet painting like this is that it will dry much lighter than the same application on dry paper. So this is the wet in wet version. Let's do the, the dry version now where we put one area of paint. I'm just mixing the colors. It doesn't really matter which ones we use. And we put a second area of paint next to that area so that they bleed in together. Now I'm using the same colors here, but you can see they're much darker already. I'll use a little bit more water in the pink there. Much, much darker already because the paint is, uh, the paper is dry. So you could leave some white areas in the paper or you could not. You, you could decide what you want to do. A little bit of more color in there is good. Uh, maybe a little bit of the pure color in a couple of places. It's pretty much the same consistency as this. It's not a whole lot darker, but it looks darker because the paper is dry. The water in the paper dilutes the paint considerably. So you can see the difference. When these two are dry, this one's going to be much lighter than this one overall, even though I use pretty much the same paint. Okay? So this is wet and wet on wet paper. This is wet and wet on dry paper. Another method that I use is called controlled wet and wet, where if you only have a small area that you want to paint, you start off with one color, and then you put another color next to it, and as you work through this, things are going to dry a little bit. So you're going to end up with a few sharper edges. And so it's not as um, soft edged as regular wet and wet. And you can control the edges by making the paint just a little stronger, moving just a little slower, and connecting up the edges, leaving some spaces if you like. But you're going to get more of a connected feel and you're going to get less movement, a little bit more control over how the paint mixes together. You can fill in little areas that you've missed. And you'll notice that you actually can make things happen more easily with controlled wet in wet than with this or this. Okay, so wet in wet generally doesn't give you a lot of control. It gives you uh, a lot of texture some soft edges, some slightly sharper edges, but controlled wet and wet allows you to work just a little longer and play a little bit more and decide maybe some suggestions of what you would like to see. And you'll get some sharp edges and some soft edges 
and it doesn't flow and you don't lose yourself quite as quickly and as easily as you do wet in wet. So this is what I call controlled wet in wet. And I use it whenever I want to have something that has a few more edges and I want to have just a little bit more control over the paint. So instead of putting large areas on and letting them bleed together, I work in smaller areas, smaller brush strokes, and just let them connect along the way. Sometimes I leave some white, sometimes I don't. It depends on the subject. So this is controlled wet in wet, this is wet in wet. Okay, so I think that's all we're going to do today for those washes. But the washes are a really fun way to understand, for you to understand, how watercolour works and for you to play with it. So our flat washes, this one's completely flat now. We can take it off the paper because it's dry. And the wet and wet, we don't have to have it an angle. That can be flat, that's not necessary. So we have some flat washes here, pretty nice flat one here, a little bit of a stripe there, but that's okay. Depending on how quickly you change colour, you're more or less likely to get stripes. If you change colour much more slowly, as I was doing right at the top here, you'll get less of the stripe feel as you go down. When you start to change more quickly, here when I moved just to straight water instead of the paint, I got just a little stripe there. So really isn't too much of a problem. And this works pretty seamlessly when you change colour all the way down. If you add a darker colour, you'll get a little more of a feeling of stripe. Okay, And the wet washes um, are a lot of fun to do. And you'll see through the book and you'll see in some of the other videos too how you can use these washes in different subjects. And particularly in backgrounds. Backgrounds are wonderful, wet in wet. If you want a soft background that doesn't interfere with the subject, then wet in wet is a good choice. If you want a background that has just a little connection with the subject, then a controlled wet in wet would be a better choice. And if you want just a bit more control over the paint overall when you're painting, and maybe a few sharper edges along the way, then the controlled wet in wet is going to be the way to go. So this one is on wet paper, this one is on dry paper, this one is controlled wet in wet. Okay, so I encourage you to play with these. Now I'm going to let these dry and then possibly you can add other subjects over the top. Use them as backgrounds and see what you can do by making a painting just by starting with a background like this. Okay, we're done with the washes for today. I will look forward to seeing you in another little video for some more pages of the book. So, bye for now.